Hours before suffering a stroke, a video of former Israeli President Shimon Peres was posted on Facebook, encouraging Israelis to buy locally made products. He appeared tired, but alert and coherent. Peres was rushed to a hospital, put in a medically induced coma, and placed on a ventilator. His office says he received a pacemaker in early September. I know that my father did not care about anything as much as he cares about people, as much as he cares about Israel, the Jewish people, and the people in Israel. In a career spanning nearly seven decades, Perez served in a dozen cabinets and twice as Labour Party Prime Minister. He often traveled abroad, most recently showing solidarity with European victims of terror. From 2007 to 2014, he served as the ninth president of Israel, meeting with other heads of state, like U.S. President Barack Obama on the conflict in Iraq and Chinese President Xi Jinping in 2014, as China urged Israel to renew peace talks with the Palestinians. Thank you so much. Perez was perhaps best known for his role as foreign minister in reaching an interim peace deal in 1993 along with Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. He would later win a Nobel Peace Prize along with Israel's Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, even though the peace did not last. When Rabin was assassinated for his support of that deal in 1995, Perez replaced him as Prime Minister. But he ultimately lost power to the more conservative Benjamin Netanyahu. As efforts to revive the Palestinian peace talks continued, Perez was not afraid to criticize his successor. As a former president, Perez cultivated an image as Israel's elder statesman, hosting public events at his peace center. Even after leaving public office, he still worked to bring together Arabs and Jews. Rowie Ruttenberg, CCTV. And for more on Shimon Peres' legacy, we are joining in our Beijing studio Mr. Li Guofu, who is the director of the Center for Middle East Studies at China Institute of International Studies. Welcome, sir. Also joining us from Hong Kong, we have Mr. Philippe Metudi. He's the CEO of Dutam Capital Limited. He's originally coming from Israel. Welcome as well. Certainly, uh, the world mourn Mr. Shimon Peres, but what do you make of his legacy, Mr. Li? I think, you know, uh, during Shimon Peres, uh, uh, almost the six uh, decades of public life. And actually, uh, Shimon Peres did two things for the Israeli as well as for the region. One is try to make uh, Israeli strong, more secure. This uh, Shimon Peres has accomplished. Mm. Uh, the other is uh, he was trying very hard to bring a peace to Israel and also bring peace between Israel and the Palestinians. But these things, you know, he has not accomplished. I see. Uh, Mr. Matudi, there have been mixed reviews coming from your country, Israel, and also from the Palestinian side. Uh, many in Israel describe uh, President Peres as a lucid dreamer now. And also those from the Palestinian side have been calling him even killer from their perspective. What do you make of these mixed reviews? Well, I, I think that the best comment we've heard today from many statesmen was the pr comment from the Prime Minister Modi from India when he said, we have lost a true world leader. And uh, I guess the whole people of Israel, as long as the Jewish people all over the world, but also the citizens pretty much everywhere are mourning his loss. Um, it's very difficult to find someone who had such a wide experience. He was 18 times uh, ministers. Right going from uh, from immigration, Deputy Prime Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, so he will be really greatly, greatly missed for what he has achieved. Mm. He is one of the very last pillar of the last generation of statesmen coming for the establishment of the country of Israel, uh, Mr. Lee. Uh, but the thing is, what is going to be the current generation compared to his generation? We understand there has been a lot of struggle going on between him and as the president when he was, and then the Prime Minister Netanyahu. I think, you know, the Israeli, I think from the older generation, especially for Simon Paris, the most important thing is to have a home for the Jewish people. And because of the very hostile, you know, surroundings, the existence of the state of Israel would be the priority for these generations. Mm. But for 
the you know the generation from the Netanyahu is uh, different because now Israel is uh, strong and is uh, secure and how to make a uh, peace with the uh, you know, Palestinians as well as the rest of the the Arab countries mm. I believe it is a made task for the generation of uh, now the current uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. But things have changed so much, as you may know. Mr. Matudi, therefore, my question for you. Since 1994, Nobel Peace Prize for Mr. Paris and two of the others, uh, Mr. Labin and uh, Mr. Arafat, and yet things have changed. With Rabin assassinated, suicide bombers coming from both sides, more resettlement by the Israeli side, and then uh, we see hard hard uh, hitting parties coming into the political scene. We've seen Camp David failed. We've seen also uh, eventually there have been the second intifad, as they say, and the change of political leadership in your country. The way I'm saying it, I'm trying to set the stage for you, Mr. Matudi. That is, what is it now? Is the peace ever farther from us? Well, I, I think that saying that the peace process is uh, not working would be slightly inaccurate. There are lots of collaborations between Israel and the Palestinian Authority as far as security, as far as water, as far as some environmental issues. And I can assure you that uh, the huge majority of the people in Israel just want one thing, they want peace. As you know, Israel is a true democratic state. It has a GDP per capita higher than the European average, a life expectancy that is higher than the US. And I think that once Israel will have the confidence they can find the right partner mm. to really sit down and, and establish a long-standing peace, I think it can happen very, very quickly. Unfortunately, it has not been the case over the last few years. But again, I'm uh, like many other people, I'm quite optimistic that something will eventually happen. I see. Uh, Mr. Lee, final question for you. So many things have changed. We understand that very well. A whole generation has changed. 2011, after the Arab Spring, the whole situation in the Middle East have changed. How farther is the hope of peace with us? I think at this moment, as you know, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said during his New York General Assembly that, you know, because of the changes, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. after the Arab Spring, you know, there is a new situation for the Israelis because a lot more Arab countries want to align with the Israelis to dealing the threat both, you know, some of the Arab countries and the Israeli mm -hmm. are facing in the Middle East. It seems that you know the peace process, Palestinian issue, has been uh, sidelined. Uh, uh, this is a, a new phenomenon for the Middle East. Right. Of course, the world more Mr. Paris, uh, who is uh, one of the eldest generation of statesmen from Israel. Of course, people from China also mourns him because of the friendship that he has established between the two countries, China and Israel. But for now, we want to thank the two of you gentlemen for sharing with us your thoughts about Mr. Perry's legacy.